Neglected diseases are uh, basically, think about malaria, tuberculosis. These are the diseases that mostly kill people in low-income countries. More than 90% of the deaths from neglected diseases are actually in low-income countries. And very, very few people in high-income countries actually die because of neglected diseases. A lot of people made this argument that the problem uh, with neglected diseases is that big pharma doesn't see the money in it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm Merck, I put a lot of money to you know, cure malaria, to come up with the next big drug for malaria. I send it to India. A moment later, someone will copy it in India. They will just you know, uh, sell it around in India for much cheaper, and I, I never get my money back uh, from that investment. Uh, it also means that no company in India has any incentive to put money in, in, in research to cure malaria because they can never get the return because they cannot protect their intellectual property right. In mid-90s, uh, when countries came together to kind of build and develop the WTO and, and the agreements, um, there, there was this argument that any country that wants to join WTO, they have to implement some minimal form of intellectual property rights, patents, copyright, trademarks, and they called it the TRIPS agreement. For a lot of these neglected diseases, we lack even the basic scientific research. We thought, let's go back in the pipeline and look at the actual scientific research on neglected disease and I asked the question, does, you know, did TRIPS have any effect on scientific research on neglected diseases? It was interesting because um, we, we actually found a significant positive effect of uh, implementation of intellectual property rights in these low-income countries on, on research on neglected diseases. And most of this research turns out to be basic research. Um, Interestingly, if we look at the impact of TRIPS in higher income, middle income countries, we also see an increase in scientific research, but mostly on non-neglected diseases, which is most, more prevalent in these countries, and mostly applied research. Kind of another interesting aspect of it is that um, every country, after implementation of TRIPS, it seems like that country looks at or focuses on the, the diseases that are prevalent in that country. So in a way, implementation of TRIPS aligned the market need with scientific research in that country at the local level. There's also a, a broader global response, a positive global response after implementation of TRIPS in a country. So in a way, if for example, India implements TRIPS and there's a lot of you know, cases of, there are a lot of cases of malaria in India, then you know, we, act we actually see an increase in research at the global level on malaria after the implementation of TRIPS in India. The big question is, what is the mechanism behind this effect? So we have the positive effect on, on neglected diseases. Um, what, is it, what is it that is driving it? And, and that's, gonna, that's the big question. That's the, that's the most difficult question to answer. There, there is not just one channel, of course. You know, there, there might be multiple channels. Uh, and we can think about the financial incentive, which was kind of the main argument for TRIPS. It creates intellectual property rights. You can patent something and protect your product for a long time and get the money back on your, on your investment. But what we're proposing in a paper is that there is actually a non-financial aspect to it. It is particularly important when we think about where this research is happening. These are scientists that we're talking about, the scientific research, and a lot of them are in, in universities and in public research institutes. And you know, of course they care about financial incentives, but they also care a lot about academic credit about recognition, about being connected to other scientists, about you know, their, their, you know, their, their publications being read and cited in, you know, in other academic works. And what uh, we're suggesting in this, in this paper is that implementation of TRIPS actually triggered a lot of changes in these countries that supported better institutions of science, which basically means that it put some more spotlight on scientists. It created institutions to categorize knowledge, to categorize prior art required to evaluate patents and intellectual property rights. It connected the local scientists to you know, scientists elsewhere. And, uh, and we think the kind of collection of these forces in, in, in improved the general institutions of science in these countries, which then contributed to more scientific research happening in these countries. And because of access of these scientists, to these local neglected diseases, it just makes sense for them, you know, they have the scientific competitive advantage to focus on these diseases that they have access to patients and, and, and they can actually get some recognition for. TRIPS, of course, uh, you know, had a positive effect and now we have some evidence, but there are, you know, there is still a lot to do research on. Uh, for example, you know, we know that there, there, is an, you know, there is an increase in scientific research on these diseases uh, after implementation of TRIPS in low-income countries, but there, you know, ba between basic research 
to an actual drug, there is a huge gap. So there are still questions of, you know, do these countries have the sufficient institutions that would take this basic research to applied research to clinical trials to an actual drug? The fact that we see, you know, this huge amount of basic research happening after the implementation of TRIPS suggests that maybe we can have some complementary policies that would incentivize scientists in academia based on what we know about scientists, that they care about recognition, that they care about academic credit, that they care about publication. So to the extent that we can put policies, other policies in place that would give them recognition, celebrate their findings, put some spotlight on them, uh, give them some funding to do those research, connect them to, you know, to other scientists in the, in the rest of the world, and make it easier for them to do the science that they want to do. Uh, these, these policies, we think, can help with, you know, with this process of advancing our knowledge on neglected diseases.